Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be testing the seven most requested Switch games being emulated on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So if you didn't already know, the Ryujinx Mac port has just been released and it works amazingly well on the original M1 chip. Loads of people have been commenting in my last video and what I've done here is I've put together a compilation video of the seven most requested games and how to get them working best on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So anyway, if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac tutorials. So the first game we're going to be looking at is Splatoon 3. So this is a game that targets 60 frames per second on the native Switch and it's easily hitting this frame rate on the M1 Mac. Now here we're just playing the single player level so obviously we're not able to connect to Nintendo's official multiplayer servers so you're going to be limited to these kind of single player modes. You can play multiplayer games with actual Switches or other Ryujinx players on the local network or you can use something called the LDN network which I'm going to cover in a future video. And once again, with pretty much all of these Nintendo Switch games on Ryujinx, the biggest issue is going to be shader compilation stutter, so expect quite a lot of that until all of your shaders have been compiled. Overall, it's a very good experience, and what's very cool as well is that we have full gyro controls, even with a PlayStation DualSense controller. So next up is Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Now I actually did successfully get Monster Hunter Rise to work on my MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, however it refused to boot up on my original M1, so I'm going to be covering this game instead. One of the issues at the moment is that text input is a little bit broken. When the menu like this comes up, you have to press the function F6 key. And no matter how many times you press the keyboard, no actual keys will get sent through. However, if you keep mashing, then eventually one or two letters might appear. And then you can create your character and move on to the next step. So this game was originally built for 30 FPS. However, if we activate a cheat, then we can actually enable 60 frames per second and it makes a huge difference in the overall feel of the game. If you want to find out how to activate 60 FPS mode in a lot of these games, then make sure to check out my last tutorial video, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So next up is the strategy game Fire Emblem Three Houses. Thankfully, this game makes use of a different type of on-screen keyboard, so we don't have any issues creating a character through Ryujinx. So I played through the first level and I didn't experience any issues at all, whether it's graphical or in-game. In-game, the graphics are locked to 30 FPS. I couldn't find a 60 FPS cheat for this, but since the game is turn-based, I don't really see a big deal with running at 30 FPS. So the main thing is going to be shader compilation stutter. So for example, here I'm using the special move Wrath Strike, and this is recorded in real time. We actually have an actual pause here that lasts several seconds and you don't even see the animation render. It just skips over as if nothing happened. However, now that the Wrath Strike shader has been compiled and cached onto your computer, this means that if I do that particular special move again, I'm gonna see it in full and we have no break or stutter. So basically make sure to play through the levels, use all your special abilities, and eventually the stutter is gonna go away. So next up is Kirby Forgotten Land. So again, this is another game that is locked to 30 FPS. And once again, there is a cheat to unlock the frame rate and allow it to run at 60 frames per second. And this actually works quite well in some of the levels and it makes it feel a lot more responsive and smooth. However, the issue is that frame rate and game speed are tied together. And whilst the M1 is really good at emulating most Switch games, if the frame rate dips below 60 frames per second with this cheat turned on, then the game world slows down as well and it turns to a little bit of a slow-mo slideshow. So at least on the original M1 chip, you're best playing this game at 30 FPS. Just watch out for that shader compilation stutter. So next up is the game Animal Crossing New Horizons, which a whole ton of people asked and requested that I do a test for on my M1 Mac. However, the game is locked to 30 FPS and the M1 Mac keeps it at the steady 30 FPS the entire way through, save for a little bit of shader compilation stutter. So in the comments of my last video, it looks like several people have tested out this game already, and the running consensus seems to be that after about 10 to 15 minutes of gameplay, the game will crash. So personally, I'm not aware of any particular fix for this at the moment. Hopefully, we just have to wait for the next version of Ryujinx to be released on Mac, which address some of these game-specific issues. Other than the crash, the in-game performance seems to be very good. So next up is the game Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now this is one of the most highly requested titles to be emulated from the Nintendo Switch. And unfortunately it's not supported by the Hypervisor on Ryujinx for Mac. So the Hypervisor is basically the magic source which allows Switch emulation to work so well on Apple Silicon hardware. The M1 Mac and the Nintendo Switch Tegra are both CPUs that are ARM based. And so when Ryujinx is executing Switch code on the M1 chip, it's being virtualized rather than being emulated, which 
means it can run really fast. And this is also very similar to the way in which the M1 Mac can also virtualize Windows 11 ARM and other ARM-based operating systems really well. So Breath of the Wild doesn't support the hypervisor at this moment in time. However, we can disable it in this instance, but we're gonna take a pretty big performance hit. So indoors within the game, you're gonna be lucky to hit around 14 to 15 FPS. And in the open world, we're getting around 10 to 15 FPS. So it's quite impressive that it works at all without the hypervisor, but it's not really very playable at all. And it's a shame because there is definitely an alternate way of playing this exact same game on the M1 Mac. Not that long ago, we had a pretty big breakthrough with the Wii U emulator called Simu. This is Zelda running through Simu on my M1 Max chip and it's far smoother despite the fact that this is running through Rosetta 2. So if you want to play Breath of the Wild, Simu is probably going to be the way to do it at the moment. However, once the Wii U Jinx hypervisor starts to work with Breath of the Wild, it's probably going to be the best way to emulate the game. That's because Simu still has some rendering bugs, for example, invisible objects like doors. Whereas on Wii U Jinx on the Mac, even with the hypervisor turned off, you can still see the door is rendered correctly. So anyway, I can't wait for this to get fixed, and when it does, I'll be sure to make a video on it. So lastly, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now what you're gonna find is that this game is a 32-bit game. So that means that it also does not take advantage of the hypervisor, which requires 64-bit games only to run through that. So unfortunately, we're gonna have a couple of issues. So firstly, we're running at very low frame rate, and that's because we don't have the hypervisor, so we're not virtualizing, we're emulating, and it doesn't work particularly well. The game speed is tied to the frame rate, so we're going particularly slow through this course. Secondly, we also have the issue of shader compilation stutter. So Mario Kart 8 is one of the few games which actually allows you to compile all of the shaders before you actually play the game. Just leave the game running on the title screen. The game will automatically run a demo of all of the levels eventually. So if you leave it on for a few hours, all of the shaders for all the levels will have compiled eventually. So Mario Kart 8 on Ryujinx on a Mac, I wouldn't necessarily play this particular version. I would also turn to Simu and play the Wii U version instead, which is gonna run a hell of a lot better on Apple Silicon Max for the moment. So anyway, it's very impressive seeing all of these Switch games running really well on the original base M1 chip. If you have any more requests, then please make sure to leave a comment. I've recently discovered a solution on how to fix shader compilation stutter. So I'm gonna be making a video on that next. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.